Habini fans and welcome in today's episode all the way from Northern Italy comes this legend frame that has decided to try it on with the princess blanket. Is it going to be hot or not? So there is a story behind this frame. The chap that brought this frame uh, is from Boston in America. He flew to Northern Italy, to Milan, picked the frame up and then brought it here to come out for fish and chips. And there's a little other side story out with that. Um, and then he's asked me to check it. Now, the, the guy that um, owns the frame, he is a Hambini fan and he's put a sticker there, which is clearly the most valuable part of this frame at the moment. So what have we got? Well, we've got this handmade artisanal, artist, whatever, frame from Bertoletti. And they have put their Italian flag because they are obviously proud to be Italian. And there's this sort of purple speckly paint job, which may or may not show up well on camera. And then inlaid is this carbon legend with clear coat lacquer on top of it. It's got, um, it's predominantly carbon construction, but there's aluminum inserts in here for the headset and also in there for the bottom bracket. And there's a few other bits and pieces to go with it. So let's start off at the back of the bike. This is a disc frame bike. It comes with an M12 by 1.5 through axle. Um, that goes through there. I've checked the geometry between here and the other you know, extremities of the bike, it's, it's pretty much bang on, it's cock on. Um, but there are a few little bits and pieces which if I was spending this much on a bike, I wouldn't be happy with. And let's start off with the gear hanger. Right, so the fit on the gear hanger is crap. Um, if I get the feeler gauges out, we can put quite a big feeler gauge in that gap. So here's a, is a one millimeter gauge. It's way bigger than that. This thing is the clear coat or whatever it is, is flaking around here. Um, so that's raw carbon, but the paint and the clear coat here is, is all flaking off. Paint around here is all getting squeezed as well. I think that's from the through axle being too tight. So this is the rear brake mount caliper clearly see it's it's not been flattened at all there's a huge gap underneath it now if i was paying for the frame i'd expect that to be bang on but it's not it's not even close to being flat i mean that's miles out crikey so this is the seat clamp if we take that off you can see this now it may not be immediately obvious but some of the slips that have been put in are not particularly straight so they're they're off on the piss so they're like that uh, especially that one um, and the holes they're really really quite poor the finishing on there you can feel some of the fibers left over this is the lower headset bearing the thickness on there is really really small compared to down here where it's comparatively thick it's also quite thick there it's not concentric this finish on here is atrocious i'll be ashamed of that this is the upper headset bearing uh, again the finish on there is terrible um, it's a load of chatter marks in there they've left the inside it just looks like it's been aluminium tube that's had the uh the bearing seat machined into it it's rough so that's not a finished machine surface and you can see it's either epoxy or uh, adhesive and some paint overspray that's that's gone in there so this is the bottom bracket it's a bsa bottom bracket and it's an aluminium insert that's been inserted in and then glued into the rest of the frame um, it does appear to have been semi-faced around the periphery of it um, inside i don't know if we'll be able to take pictures of it you can probably hear it actually there's some loose carbon fibers and um, the edges of the fibers don't have any adhesive on them and they you can actually feel them it's a bit it's just rough inside also felt felt like um there was some swarf in fact you can still see it some swarf left um behind from them looks like cutting the threads 
So the chap wanted um, a BSA bottom bracket putting in. This is a BSA 30 slash 29. Um, I think this is the dub variant anyway. Um, so we're going to try putting that in. This isn't going to be pretty. <laughs> I'll warn you in advance. So the way this works is you've got the drive side, which is this side, and the non-drive side, which is this side. And then there's a sleeve to center you up as you go around. Um, so if there's any discrepancy in the threading, it'll take that into account. And we can just tighten this up. Okay, so that's hand tight. I've got the tool to put on top just to give it a little bit more. Okay, I could get the wrench on it but I'm not going to because you're about to see why. Got a 0.1 millimeter feeler gauge. If I bring it from this side, see it clearly goes in there and then up there it goes tight and round here is absolutely no gap. So it's tight up against there. Now on the other side The gap is massive, apart from over there where it's touched. So I've just brought the light in so you can see the gap. Um, it's a wedge-shaped gap. The same over there, but might not be so easy to see because of the camera angle. But I mean, that's such a big gap, it's crazy. Now is I'm going to install a standard Shimano bottom bracket because these frames were designed to use 24 millimeter axle. So I'm going to put that one in to show you it's not rigged. So this is again one of my bottom brackets with the two piece um, sliding sleeve. That's now installed. The 0.1 doesn't go in the top of there, but it goes all the way around there. It's actually quite slack in there. I could get quite a bit more in there. You can see me get the grease in and out. So there's a fault in the shell, it's basically not flat. As you go further away, this is actually sticking out further. So if you have a larger diameter bottom bracket, which is what the other one does for a 30 mil axle, um, it, it makes it worse. And this is the non-drive side. So again, 0.1 goes in there really easy. And then up there, no gap, so it's bottomed out there. There's a fairly big gap round there. It's actually considerably more than 0.1. Here we go. Legend, my ass more like Belen. By Hambini, aged five. We obviously need to do that obligatory pen check. The pen is working now i'd like to say thank you to that individual on instacrap that sent me the uh the uh the, the picture of the pen is working use your own if your pen's not working right bertoletti company overview right i mean this is just ridiculous just to give you a bit of background the chap who uh whose bike frame this is he physically brought the bike frame here so he flew from um, from the stage from Boston to Milan to pick up the bike frame and then to Manchester and then dropped it off around my house um, his car broke down in my drive so we had to fix it and had a little tour of fish and chip shops and various other little bits and pieces but nonetheless it was an experience I feel quite sad for him personally because it's his dream frame and it's been reamed and uh, he's now, as you're watching this, you know, three months have passed and um, it, we've got to the stage where you, it's, it's been fixed. But it's quite depressing that you go to, uh, you know, what is known as a handmade bespoke Italian artisan frame company and you get this. Now, let me show you the website. So this is the Bertoletti website. Um, handmade in Italy with the best raw material, titanium, carbon, aluminum, so we've gone for the American spelling, steel and stainless steel. 
Um, so that I think is the chap who runs the business, Marco Bertoletti, and these are the frames that you can have. So you have titanium, carbo titanium, carbon, steel, stainless steel, blah blah blah. Um, so yeah, the, I don't know. I mean, this is just unbelievable, really. What you're about to see is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now the bottom bracket on this bike is a lot better than the one that, um, that I had to get away uh, and fix with. Um, there's something about the ton shape in here. Don't really know what it means. Don't understand. But frankly, with a machine like that, who cares? Right. Let me take you back to the PowerPoint. Shit. Oh, right. So this slide is sponsored by Bright Lou Bog Cleaner. Um, let's get the pen back. This is the headset. Um, I mean, look at the gap there. And then the gap there. So if you're going to machine something, you could at least get it in the middle. Um, there's loads of chat marks all the way around here. I mean, it's just a joke. Just shambolic. Absolutely shambolic. Um, and it's rough, it's really, really rough all the way around. Um, then we've got... Uh, this is the uh, gear hanger. Uh, look at that gap there. Okay, the gap there, you might argue, is not so much of an issue, but look at that. The little kink there. Um, this paintwork around here is all scraggy. Um, I'm not... I mean, I'm not fussed about paintwork, but you want the perfect bike. And then this is the brake mount with the Hambini Beaver on board. Um, and then we've got the light source behind it. So the OB Beaver light. Um, and then, yeah, that's really, really flat. You spend that much on a bike frame and end up with that that needs correcting. Um, this, is, this is the seat tube um, this may not be so obvious so I'm gonna go and paint a drawer over it but that doesn't have any hole in it so normally what you do is if you're gonna make a hole you put a, a slit sorry you put a, a big hole at the end of it I know what that looks like I know what you're thinking <laughs> it's not what you're thinking <laughs> the, the reason for that is if you have a square edge you get crack formation out of there. So, for fraction mechanics, the de Havilland Comet was one of the most famous examples. They had square windows um, and the fuselage snaps in half. So, if you go on pretty much any modern aircraft, you'll see the windows uh, sort of rounded on the corners, and that is to stop crack propagation. So that's what that that is there for. So this bit here is there. That doesn't have it. Now you can see this one. I'm actually following the point around. It looks more like a triangle. It's just basically really shitly machined. It's absolutely fucking appalling. Um, there, yeah, there's a better shot of it. So you can see that the hole that's supposed to be round is more like when I'm pointing it, using my pen studiously. It's, it's just dreadful dreadful and then also if you hadn't spotted it in case you missed it for the comments those are voids uh, completely external but we've got nothing there um, this looks like it's been made on some sort of mandrel you can see the spiral marks on it now we come on to the bottom bracket now this is a BSA bottom bracket now normally it is 1.37 by 24 teeth per inch. Now, if you ask Shimano, because you like to bastardize standards, sometimes they write that as 1.37 by 1 millimeter pitch. So you've got 1.37 inches by 1 millimeter. 24 teeth per inch and 1 millimeter pitch aren't that different. So that's probably why they do it anyway. It's 1.37. So normally you have um, uh, threaded both sides, and in the case of this bottom bracket, there is a uh, an aluminium tube that goes all the way down. Now, on this bike, 
got a few issues. So the aluminium tube, which is the orange bit, the carbon around it sits proud. So you've got this, this bit here and this bit here. The other thing, and it may not be so obvious, is there is misalignment. So you've got misalignment, um, if you look here, see that gap there is smaller than that gap there. This is a schematic, so it's not it's not exactly what's there. I've just drawn it to illustrate before anyone gets their knickers in a twist. Um, and this is the datum. So the, the big problem here is, and this is what took time, is establishing where that datum was and how to fix it. Now, that's one bit. The other bit is the chap asked for abrasives to remove all this material, so all of this stuff wanted it removed with abrasives. The problem with that is, and I would have normally gone for a knife, is this material, the orange material, which is aluminium, is much harder than the carbon. So when you start to, um, to abrasively remove material, it tends to ever so slightly dish. I mean, the advantage is with a knife, it's more like planing, whereas with abrasive, it's like sanding wood. I'm referring to. <clears throat> it doesn't doesn't you don't get the heat um, generate wave. Well, you don't get the, the the layer removal, which is something you don't want. But it's more difficult to set up to uh, to abrasively remove that material. So. If, for example, um, you had a very, very long bridge from A to B that was, let's say, two kilometres long, so a mile long, and you wanted to get it so it was plumb level, and what you used was a laser level. You projected the laser level from one end to the other and said, that is perfectly horizontal. That wouldn't work. The reason that wouldn't work is because of the curvature of the Earth. So the, the Earth is curved, so you, you would actually be slightly higher at one side than you would be at the other. So how do you get around these things? Well, you could use a water level. That would give you... But that, then the, the roadway would be curved. In this case, it's a similar kind of thing. The, the problem is, where do you fix your zero point? Because you have to fix on one point and then get all the, the, you know, the, the perpendicularity, the concentricity from that point. Here... It's difficult because one side's tapered, the threads look like that. So the hole wasn't perfectly round. So we had to clean all that up and then sort it out. That is not straightforward. As far as complexity to do this, this was by far the most difficult one I've done. So what is the engineering fix? Well, it's called Fwitif. Fwitif is fiddle with it till it's fucked. And I'll do a bit more on that on Patreon. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, you will get some more of the information with regards how to fix this. Um, and then we move on to the final slide, which is the Hambini scale of penetration, which I reserve for, you know, I have a different scale every week these days. Right, again, once again, we have an arrow. On the left, as much penetration as pigeon shit. On the right, a Scud missile that has quite a bit of penetration, and somewhere in the middle, more towards Scud missile, we have Tyrone the hairdresser. So, in red, because it could kill you, Bowman Cycles Welding. Now, if you haven't seen that video, that is the most appalling welding I've ever seen. I can't believe they let it out the door, and I cannot believe the guy has not been sued because what he did was an absolute joke. So, um, yeah, have a look at that. That was a ridiculous thing to do. And then we have me into clearing accounts, uh, which would be a Scud missile. And then finally, the Bollocksetti Bell End. Now, this, as I said before, is just a bit of a joke, really. A complete joke. You spend so much on a frame, go to all that, you know, all the effort to fly from the States to go and pick the frame up and the guy leaves that out the door. He's obviously checked it because, you know, one man has made that frame and put his name on it and everything like that. 
and let it out the door. You'd have to have some uh, some serious stupidity to do that, knowing full well the person who bought the frame said it was going to be sent to the Hambini channel for scrutiny. So there you go. Right, let's go back to the garage. So you rejoin me some three months later and seven goes are trying to fix this. Uh, we got somewhere close. It's not perfect, but I will talk you through it right now. Now, the owner had some toing and froing with um, Legend or Bertoletti. Um, and then I guess, you know, the responses they gave weren't great. Um, I saw some of them, <laughs> frankly a joke. But anyway, uh, we've got to this stage now and um, this has actually been cleaned up. Now what the, the customer wanted was, he wanted this to be addressed by abrasive. Now normally I would go for a knife on there, uh, when I say knife, so stick it into a boring machine and then cut across there. That has the advantage in the sense that it gets it much flatter but the disadvantage is uh, because of the nature of carbon and the kind of unknownness of this material, um, it's a bit more aggressive. So anyway, he wanted, that's what he wanted. The difficulty I had with this is it's, it, I mean, there's two elements to it. There's, there's the height difference and then also the flatness. Now this has been taken down and you can see how this has been made. So in the middle, what we've got is part of the bottom bracket that the chap wanted. If I unscrew that a bit further down out of the way. It's an aluminium tube um, that has two flat sections on it. So there's a flat here and a flat here. So if it's coming across like it's distorted on the video, it's, it's not, it's there as a locating feature and it looks to be in line with the seat tube. The, you know, the abrasive has gone down and machine, well, taken a, quite a big layer off, but you can see the difference in height. So over here, it still hasn't touched it. Whereas over here in the top sort of northern sector, it has um, taken quite a bit of material out. But even then, it's not perfect. We flip this over. So this is the other side. Again, you can see the same kind of scenario where it's fairly round there and then over here, I mean, it's still not taking enough material out of there. You get to a point where you've got to draw the line and say, well, do I take more material out or do I just live with it? The issue here is the the quality of the carbon construction beneath is a huge unknown and when I started taking stuff off it might not be so obvious again but you can it started to expose these voids and then it was just a question of um, stopping the other problem is if you take too much material off you'll screw up the chain line because the um, aluminium tube uh, becomes too small um, and then um, the 68 millimeters that you're normally supposed to have um, isn't going to be there. So this is the bottom bracket the chap wanted to put in. Now this is the way the things are going these days, which is a 30 millimeter axle or a dub axle into a BSA bottom bracket. It's not ideal. Um, you were better off using a 24 millimeter uh, axle, so something that's 6805 based rather than 6806 based. The main reason for that is this is the threaded section. You can see how thin the side walls are. Um, those thin side walls are unavoidable, irrespective of whose bottom bracket you get. Um, and it's mainly because the, the axle that goes through there has to be 30 millimeters, so you have to make the side walls quite thin. Um, these kind of bottom brackets aren't as stiff as a 24 millimeter one in this application, purely because of that reason. But nonetheless, you know, the crank set manufacturers market 30 millimeters and dub, but if you've got the choice, I wouldn't recommend you did it. This is the bottom bracket that's been installed and you see there's hardly any gap. There is a little bit of gap and that's because when you use abrasives as opposed to a knife, it's difficult to get it flat. Um, the centre section through here is aluminium, whereas the edges are carbon. The carbon is inherently soft and it just comes off, whereas the aluminium isn't, um, so it tends to dish it. Now. You probably could just leave it as it is, like that, but 
I mean, I wanted to do a belt and braces job. Um, so what I've done is we've got some, this is called Flexitalic. It's a type of gasket paper. It looks a bit scabby, but um, you can just about make out the Flexitalic logo. If you put that behind it, it will, sh sh well, shim out, probably that's not possibly the right word, um, but it will even out some of the surface irregularities. So I'm gonna put that in and then show you. So this one is 0 0.8, 0 0.7 to 0.8 mil thick. Um, and that will usually compress down to about a half. You just need to grease this and then screw that in. Some grease on there, it's almost like grease proof paper, and then slide the gasket over. Put a little bit more grease on the top. Only to uh, make it adhere a bit better. And that should be that. I will just point out, I've actually had to clean the threads up because not even they were square. So they've been recut. Oh yeah, that's better that. So it's just hand tight, but the gap's gone. It's actually done just by hand pressure. Fairly good job at removing any of the, uh, the discrepancy. To be honest, the discrepancy was quite small, but now it's nothing. So that is quite all right, really. And thankfully, that is the end of this video. This bike frame has been problematic, basically from start to finish. I can't even recommend it. I mean, the chap's put a sticker on the side of there. I think it's a disgrace. Um, I just honestly think it's a disgrace. It's extremely, the execution, the final execution, and the portrayal of something that's you know, handmade and artisan and all that kind of stuff. Just unbelievable. I mean, the technicalities of trying to, you know, find the point in space so you could machine this um, straight, perpendicular and all, and could center it. It was not easy, and I do not imagine that they would have the expertise to be able to do that. Um, I had to go and speak to quite a few people just to figure out how to get this done. It was not straightforward at all. Um, Okay, it's not an aerospace application, but it's technically quite difficult because, and the other thing is, the, the frame flexes quite a lot compared to some of the ones that I've had. Um, yeah, it's just a joke. Now, that brings us to the end of this video. If you did enjoy it, remember to smash that like button. If you didn't, remember to whack the dislike button um, and screw yourself. Um, Oh, and hit subscribe. Um, if you do like this content and this sort of content, uh, if you wish to subscribe to Patreon, then I'll be more than up for that. Um, and as always, keep banging your hairdresser.